Barbara. I'm so worried, dear. What about the car? You know, you haven't driven very much. Do you think you can manage? I don't know. But what else can we do? We'll have to risk it. Now, Mama, are we ready? I don't know, dear. I really don't know. I'm... Oh, let's go, Mama. Oh, for heaven's sake, let's go. There you are. Did you see what you wanted? Yes. What do you make of it? Very peculiar. It's a pity it had to happen here. Hmm? If you could see the other villas, wealth, taste, luxury. Is that him? Yes. <laughs> what was he, this William Brown? Australian. He kept some good liqueurs. I mean, what did he do for a living? Well, nothing. He must have had private means. Hmm. Anything in the Secret Service business? Well, you've seen the local papers. He worked for the Jersey and Bureau during the war. Well, do you think there's anything in it? We'll find out. It did have to happen at the beginning of the season. That was why we wanted it hushed up. Not hushed up, cleared up. My instructions are that the case requires tactful handling. So I've come 600 miles to be tactful. I wonder why. You'll find things easy here. Sunshine, flowers, beautiful women. Yet William... On the Riviera we live and let live. William Brown was murdered. Yes. Curacao, Chartreuse. He was stabbed right in the middle of the back and bled to death. But perhaps you'd prefer scotch. Scotch? How long did he last? Dirty. Well, the women swear that he drove home here and then walked to the door before he died. 
With a knife in his back? Without a knife in his back. Water, soda? Neat. These two women, he lived with them for ten years. They kept him in the house for three days dead in this weather. Then they buried him in the garden and r ran off. You've sent for them? They're on their way. They can't explain why they kept him lying stiff on the divan there. For all that time, the only explanation that I can see is that they were too refrained to notice a corpse in the drawing room. Mm. Oh, damnation, there they come. Another scotch. Well, you'll need it for this couple. The daughter reeks of scent. It knocks you sideways. Come in, ladies. All right, thank you. You can wait. Will no one introduce us? Chief Inspector Megre is from Paris. Such manners. <laughs> Inspector, uh, this is my daughter, Dina, uh, poor dear William's wife. You've come all the way from Paris to save us from these dreadful police. They actually arrested us, as if we would ever have hurt poor dear William. Inspector Megre will understand. Poor William came back to die in my arms. Putting us in a very awkward position. Uh, yes, well, will you sit down, please? <laughs> yes. I'll leave you to it. Perhaps you care to wait outside in the balcony. Gladly. Well, now, what sort of a man was he to live with? William was an ideal husband. Yes, we all sat together in the evenings. William sat there? Yes. <coughs> what did you do? Well, uh, I, I did my embroidery. Oh, I'm very fond of reading. What did William do? Nothing. Oh, uh, he just liked being with us. You mean to say you just sat here like this every evening for ten years? Sometimes we listen to the radio. William liked to spend all his time at home. The odd thing is, you're rather like William, don't you think so, Mama? I noticed it myself as soon as I saw him. <clears throat> Do you mind? Oh, not at all. Poor dear William sometimes used to smoke a pipe. Yes, well, let's talk about last Saturday, shall we? What time did he come home? He drove home about five and staggered up the path as if he... Gina. As if he was drunk? Mm. Then what happened? I called out from the window that he could come in when he'd sobered up. Splendid. You've convinced me of your innocence. Oh, thank you. Oh, Inspector, I knew you'd save us. Just a moment, madam. Give me a few more honest answers and perhaps you won't go back to prison. Anything, Inspector. <laughs> Anything rather than that. Did he often come home drunk? Only when he went to get the money. On the first of every month. Saturday was the fifth. <laughs> well, the... The, the, the fact is, we haven't been quite frank with you, Inspector. Oh. Our natural desire not to speak ill of the dead. He always stayed away when he went to get the money. Hmm. For how long? Two or three days, sometimes more. Otherwise, he never left us. Where did he get this money from? He wouldn't tell us. Uh, he wasn't very conversational about money. Well, did you ever try to find out? Well... I followed him once or twice. He put his car in a garage in Cannes and then vanished. Until he came home here sodden with drink. It's with barely enough money to last us the month. When he fell through the door, dying, why didn't you get the police? Well, uh, it was a question of property. William and I were not precisely married. No, it was most unfortunate, but he already had a wife. In Australia, she could have claimed the house and everything in it. And a lot of the furniture belonged to me. Uh, we knew there was a will. Leaving everything to me. But we couldn't find it. I see. Well, if you wanted the house, why did you run away? I admit we were foolish. We just panicked. You see, we'd taken it for granted that William had been s stabbed in some drunken brawl. And then we had a terrible thought. Supposing he was still mixed up with spies. They might think he was still alive and we were guarding it's him. Two defenceless women. So you buried him in the garden? Well, what else could we do? Did you look in his pockets? Yes, we found very little. Some money, about 500 francs. What else? Only rubbish. Will you get them for me, please? Will you help her, madame? Uh, everything we took away was our own property, Inspector. Oh, I understand perfectly. You know, he wasn't my idea of a complete gentleman. Sometimes he wore his pyjamas for days. He even drove me to the village in them. Oh, you're most embarrassing. I think he only did it to annoy us.
Good day. Finished? No. Hmm. <laughs> he sounds quite a character, this William Brown. Shh, that woman's scent. Hmm. What a devil could he put up with those two for ten years? Ten years of endless evenings. Mother with her needlework, daughter with her pulp magazines, nothing but the radio to relieve the monotony. The tame lapdog. Hmm, who well, apparently looked a little like me. Sure, it seems he had his day now and then. This is all we've got. Thank you. Will you put them there? Did William ever take you to a cafe with slot machines? Oh, we would never enter any such place. Thank you, ladies. Will you wait in the other room? Are you letting them go? Yes. Yeah. What have you got there? They found them in his pockets. But slot machines were made illegal months ago. You won't find one on the Rivera. Well, I can but try. Tell the ladies they can stay here. I'll be in touch. I'm Yaya. Fat Yaya, you'll call me. Where are you from? Paris. Criminal justice. It's about William. Come on in. I knew one of you lot would get here in the end. I told you, Jan, they're taking William seriously. This is Jan. He's a good boy. You don't mind if we go on eating? Eat up, Jan. Doesn't understand the word. He's Swedish. Oh, and this is Sylvie, William's goddaughter, but not in a religious way. <laughs> I'll make some more salad. He eats a lot, this Jan. <laughs> do you live here? Sometimes she does, and sometimes she doesn't. What does she do? Well, now, Inspector. <laughs> She's a good girl. Have you had your dinner? Yes. If you haven't, just speak up. We don't stand on ceremony here. At least you'll have a glass of wine. Fetch a glass for the inspector, Sylvie. William took to her. She used to tell him all her troubles. It's been a great blow. Was there ever anything between William and her? Never. It's not true. What's it got to do with you anyhow? Now, now, Sylvie, the inspector meant no harm. Sit down and get on with your dinner. <laughs> Well, I go. 
Come back later, Jan. We'll have a good dinner. Yeah. He's very quiet. He's from a yacht. He brought us the meat. Mm -hmm. Well, here's good health. This is some of William's whiskey. Would you like a drop? I'm going to get rest. That's a good girl. She's too thin. William used to worry about her. Did she first come here with William? Oh, no. She's only been here two years. She came down from Paris for the season. She was sitting in the corner crying. Poor kid, she didn't have enough money for a bed. So I took her in. Does she bring her customers here? Oh, no, never. There are plenty of hotels in Cannes. Mm -hmm. She just stayed on because she's a friend, that's all. How long have you known William? Since his rich days. And the way he used to throw his money around. Oh. How do you lose his money? I never asked. I'm not the worrying sort. Was he here last week? For two or three days. Mm -hmm. Well, now, uh, do you spend much money here? Money? Oh, you do a little shopping, maybe buy a few drinks or settle the gas bill. <laughs> Did he seem uh, sad? Sad? You couldn't say that. We like to take it easy here. We like a little talk, a little drink, and maybe a little cry. <laughs> Tell me about Saturday. He left about two o'clock, just after lunch. Two? He didn't arrive at his own house until five. You know, you look just like William sitting there. Hmm. What did you do when he went? Oh, it was a hot day, sleepy. I just sat here, my eyes kept closing. I must have slept for hours. Poor William. Did he say where he was going? Never asked. We don't ask questions here. Oh. Are you off now, dear? When did you leave on Saturday? She left ten minutes before William. Mm -hmm. Where'd you go? What a question. Down by the harbour? Hmm? There, anywhere. I'm now, if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. Hello, yeah, yeah. Oh, this is Giovanni. He's a waiter at the casino. Hello. <laughs> Giovanni, don't you think the inspector looks like William? You knew William Brown? Well, a little bit. Oh, no, no, Giovanni. We've all had drinks together. Not that Giovanni ever gets drunk. I just <laughs> dropped in to pass on a tip. So you're back horses? Now and then. I'll come back later. <laughs> He'll lose. He always does. It's very hard on Sylvie, poor kid. But he's a good boy. And a girl has to have a friend. Do we all need friends? William and I have seen a lot together. I'm going to miss him. Poor William. Oh. Will you have another drink? Sorry, Yaya. I've got to go. Well, drop in again any time. Mm -hmm. That's enough, Yaya. What do you know about it? William and I were the same kind. You would not understand. <laughs> Anything known? She's never caused any trouble. She uses the half-hour hotels. Could you get me a list of them? Certainly, sir. What do you know about Liberty Bar? Oh, funny place, that. Kept us guessing for quite a while. At one time, we thought Yaya might be trading in drugs, but there was nothing like that. Quite harmless, sir. Oh, yes. Oh, Mother Yaya has an irresistible attraction for a certain type. Older men who've seen it all. Yes, that's about it. And now they just want to sit and drink and reminisce. Oh. What do you know about Sylvie's boyfriend, Giovanni? Oh, we know all about him. We keep an eye on him because he's always at the races. But we've got nothing on him. No record. Ah, my dear Maigret, there you are. I thought you got lost in our beautiful town. I've got news for you, but first, do you want to see the corpse? No. Guillaume. Sir? Get down to the Antibes police mortuary. Tell them they can screw down the coffin. Very good, sir. His son has turned up. William Brown has a son. Three sons and a wife in Australia. They grow wool. They have a sheep station about the size of France. We're all probably wearing some of Brown's sheep. 
Well, what about this son who's turned up? He's Harry Brown. He's the one at this end. He's from Antibes, from, oh, from Hamburg, from Liverpool. He collects wool from ships. What does he say about his father? He rings every hour to say how quick and how much. He wants a fast funeral. The hearse has to be at the mortuary at 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. <laughs> That's so that nobody can come. It'll be unlucky. Are you going to tell the Martine women? You can tell the Martine. I want to see them there. William had friends in Cannes. He was one of the family. We must all come and pay their last respects. But the Martine women were obviously not in his class. <laughs> no, they're much too refined for William. Where's Harry Brown now? He's taking a suite of rooms in Joanne Lafayette. At a hotel? The Provence Club. Now, can you get this across to the Liberty Bar right away? It's for Fat Guy R. Yes, sir. Thank you. Well, how do I get to Joanne Lafayette? By car, of course. Oh, by the way, there was a character called Yarn when I got to Liberty Bar. Find out what he was doing on Saturday afternoon. Right. Oh, excuse me, sir. Do you want the list? It's nearly finished. Oh, I'll pick it up tomorrow. If I have time, if I still need it. We'll see the inspector now, Mr. Brown. All right, all right, Harry. Very good, sir. 750 bales. Hold the line a moment, please. Mr. Mr. Brown will see the inspector right away. Hello? Yes? Yes, put them through. Excuse me, sir. Stockholm coming on the line again. Yes, that's Block 30. We still have no information. Tell them I'll call within 24 hours. Very good, sir. Hello? Dock strike Genoa yes, continues sir. to Thursday. Pending shipments will need rerouting. Investigate yes, availability. Yes, Shipping directed yes, late. Right, Very good, sir. Position your Advise delay sale at block 14. Will you come in, sir? I'm flying tomorrow. We'll inform position Friday late. Excuse me, sir. Chief Inspector Megre to see you, sir. Yes, all right. Show him in. He is in, sir. Huh? Oh, yes. All right, I can give him five minutes. Very good, sir. Urgent. Mr. Brown, wait for five minutes, minutes sir. latest clip. Forecast there to standard at block 30. Last to Sweden needs immediate confirmation. Mr. Brown? Yes. Uh, do sit down, will you? Excuse me. Negotiation stock and stand still until this information is to hand. Get that off at once, will you, Mr. Brown? Yes. Excuse me if I seem busy. I'm leaving tomorrow. Well, this is an annoying affair. Oh, positively. It's always annoying to find a knife between your shoulder blades. Track that out in the next room, Harris, will you? No calls through here for the moment. Very good, sir. I'd better tell you the facts. Because if you don't understand the situation, you may put your foot in it. it must be avoided at all costs. Yes. Now for your drink. Thank you. My father's caused us a lot of trouble. Now that he's dead, we don't want it all stirred up again. But if you think we kicked him out and left him to rot over here because of some family quarrel, you're wrong. Water, please. What? No. It wasn't like that at all. How was it? He left us. Came to Paris years ago on a business trip. Up to then, he'd been a perfectly normal, hard-working wool merchant. France ruined him. Really? He never came back. Left my mother alone with one of the largest cheap stations in Australia. Well, the business seems to have survived. Only because she and my uncle managed to take affairs out of his hands. Is there anything we could do to stop him spending? The amount of money he'd simply thrown away was fantastic. I believe you bought a yacht. Yes. Must have flitted it on champagne. Gambled away thousands at the casinos. Then there were girls from nightclubs. Seemed to have lost all... all sorts of dignity. We needn't go into details. So you cut off his source of supply and made him an allowance? Yes. How much? It was paid into a bank in Cannes. A hundred pounds a month. Only 1,500 new francs. If we'd given him any more, he'd have gone on throwing it away. Suppose he got fed up and decided to go back to Australia. From time to time, he'd write and threaten to come back. Just to annoy us. That's the sort of man he was. Yeah. He was never meant it. He was completely soaked in the French way of life. At the lowest level, of course. He'd gone native. Exactly. And the worst of it is, I'm pretty sure that he enjoyed it. Extraordinary. Well, Inspector, I did say five minutes. I'm sure you'll appreciate that I have a great deal to do. One more question, Mr. Brown.
Where were you on Saturday between two and five o'clock? Saturday. I was in Marseille. You didn't see your father on that day? I haven't seen him for years. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Mr. Brown. We shall meet again at the funeral. Yes, but look what we've got. Morning, everyone. You haven't seen these people in the house? No, who are they? Mourners. But we don't want them at our funeral. Is it time for Sylvie to get some flowers from the market? Yes, she's got time. Why didn't we think of flowers? We have some lovely flowers in the garden. Are these the women he lived with? Poor William. Find out anything about the yarn? Yes, I do, Mrs. Bishop. We can. The Swede is a steward on a large yacht, mm -hmm. and he was not aboard on Saturday afternoon. Mm. We have a list of the half hour hotels for you, and are you checking on the girl? Well, I have to make a start somewhere. I'll take William's photograph along as well. But she's not his type. She's, oh, she's too undernourished. Just the same. He's looking into her. Miss Brown. Good morning. Oh, sir. Everything ready? Yes, yes. Uh, have you met these ladies? Madame Martin. Mademoiselle Gina. So you're William's son. <laughs> and this is Fat Yaya. Oh, I knew your father well. Oh, good. You got the flowers. Another of your father's friends. Watch carefully. One of them killed. Double or single? Police. Who had that man staying here? Might have, might not. Don't look at their faces. See the register. Oh, it's hopeless. Hotel incognito, that's what we are. What about this girl? Oh dear, yes. She's upstairs. <laughs> Room seven, Monsieur and Madame La Roche. Oh. Albert? Yeah? yeah? Number seven, are they ordered drinks? No, nothing at all. Well, they won't be long then. If you'd like a drink while you're waiting, there's a little cabin I'm down... a police officer. Well, even police are human. I thought he was that chap who was here the other day. You remember? A crazy fellow who brought in all the flowers. Just a minute. Was this the man who looked like me? The man with the flowers? I couldn't say. What does that mean? I'm not sure. Was the man with the flowers here with Sylvie? I couldn't say. You better ask her. Well, when was he here? Come on, was it Saturday? I don't remember. What about you? 
Do you remember? Yeah. Where's the nearest flower shop? One on the corner. Mademoiselle. your boyfriend, Giovanni? I saw him hanging around just before the funeral, but I missed him afterwards. Did he come here to meet you? No! No! Call police headquarters, Inspector Boutique. Uh. You want me to use handcuffs? Hello. Police? Police? I have to pay for the call. I got to keep a couch, same as anyone else. Uh, uh, police headquarters? Hotel Beau Séjour, yeah? Yes, I am calling you. Inspector Boutique. Uh, just a minute. Boutique? Migri. Brown is leaving today. He must be stopped. I don't care. Tell him anything you like. But he's not to leave. Uh, 75 centimes. Open your bag, Sylvia. No. That's a lot of money. An awful lot of money. It wasn't a nice funeral, Jan. Not? I tried to cry, but the tears would not come. I'm not built for funerals anymore. Oh, you savvy, Jan? Uh, feet. Mm, ankles. Pour me another drink, there's a good boy. Yeah. You again? Clear out. I said clear out. Sorry, Jan. Come back later. So you Sit may... down. Twenty thousand francs. Oh no, my poor Sylvie. She got it from Harry Brown. Well, what have you got to say? Nothing. I'm waiting. You can wait all day, you dirty brute. What have you got to say? Oh now, why don't we all have a drink and make friends again? What do you know about this? Hmm, just nice crisp notes. She wouldn't earn that in a year. Today she got it in twenty minutes. Explain it. Maybe he took a fancy to her at the funeral. <laughs> So you're not going yet? No. How long will you be staying? Until one or other of you talks. Or maybe until someone else comes in for the share out. You'll feel better when you've had a drink. I'll have a clean glass. Shh. In the kitchen. Don't tell him anything, Giovanni. I've nothing to tell. I'm sorry, sir. You could thank her for the money. Money? Yes, she got it for him. What's the matter? Sit down. Where have you come from? I've uh, been to get my identity card renewed. You're an Italian, hmm? Born in Milano. When did you first meet Harry Brown? Who is he? William Sam. Be quiet. Now listen, Ambrosini. I suppose you'll admit to being Sylvie's lover. Depends what you mean. Come on, come on. You're what's politely known as her protector. What hold have you got on Harry Brown? I suppose she did it for the money. She's pretty enough, huh? Now, why don't we all have a little drink Try and again. stop this argument? Oh. I give you exactly 30 seconds to tell me how you got the money. Hello, 
want to eat? Neither one. I want some beer. There's no beer in this barn. Anything you've got to say to me? Say it direct to me. Well? Fine. I'm arresting you and you. Uh, not Yaya. She knows nothing. I swear she doesn't. You're not taking Sylvie. Come on. Not my little Sylvie. Goodbye, no. Yaya. No, no, Sylvie. No, no. Oh, oh. Oh, Sylvie. <laughs> But Mr. Brown has been trying to contact Inspector Boutique for some hours now. Surely you have some idea when he'll be back. Give that to me. Give us right to type those out. Give the general layout and then get back to us. Mrs. Brown. Sir. Now look here. I have extremely urgent business in Berlin. It's essential that I catch the evening plane. These papers about my father's house, can't they be sent on to me? Why on earth should I wait here until they are prepared? Come in. This is nonsense. Will you kindly tell Inspector Boutique, is it that I should be leaving tonight? What do you want? Stopped at the airport. Sit down, madame. On what grounds? This is preposterous. Will you tell Inspector Boutique to call me the moment he returns? Now, madame. Hi. What can I do for you? I have come, uh, but I don't know. You come to tell me about my father. No, no, not William. I have a message. A message from Giovanni. He's a good boy. Giovanni? Sylvie's boyfriend. Oh, he spends a little money on the races, but if the money doesn't go one way, it goes the other. You have a message. Uh, Giovanni says, but then he only had the moment. He said if I told you, you'd get him out. Out? Of where? They put him in prison. Really? He said if I told you, you'd help him. You know why. I'm afraid there's nothing I can do. But you put Sylvie in prison, would too. Would you allow me to send you home by taxi? He said he didn't want to tell the police about you know what. Have you come here to blackmail me? What? Didn't you get enough money out of my father? You! You! Why did she come? To get her friends out of prison. You took a girl to the place you suppose we call that an indiscretion. You gave her 20,000 francs. Now you refuse to help her? Yes. Why? This is what I bought for 20,000 francs. My father's will. Oh. Who had it? Soon after the funeral, a man came to see me. I gather his name is Giovanni. He showed me a copy and said I could buy the original if I went to a certain hotel in Cannes. How did Giovanni get it? He stole it. And my father was drunk. When your father was murdered, you bought it back again. It was my duty to do so. Hmm. I thought your father had nothing to leave. Uh, the will only had nuisance value. Morally, the property belongs to my mother. Factually, it belongs to my mother. And uh, legally? Oh, legally, there's a faint shadow of a doubt. He was still fighting for what he claimed were his rights. He knew he couldn't win, so he took advantage of the situation to annoy us. He hired shady lawyers to keep the dispute open. Set the bills to us, of course. <laughs> His death must have been a relief to you. Yes, if he'd had the decency to die without making a will. We've stood a lot. And now, do you see who he's left his non-existent fortune to? Now, Martine, Gina, Yaya, Sylvie. These are Falling women. <laughs> All four of them turning up in Australia. <laughs> Sylvie, Yaya, Gina. Making absurd claims on our property. We should be laughed out of the country. Your father meant it as a joke. Exactly. An unpleasant, embarrassing joke. It was typical of him. Tell me, is it legal in Australia to destroy a will? It's not my habit in any country to break the law. I haven't destroyed the will. It's in your hands. You may do as you think fit, but I assure you that in the end... The Brown family will win. Yes. Are you prepared to swear on oath that you've never seen this will until after your father's death? Yes. I've never met any of these dreadful people before. I hope I never do again. 
Right. Is your father fond of flowers? Sorry, stupid question. I uh, beg your pardon, sir. Sorry, I'm just going. Cancel my flight. I thought we were finished here. Now, I'm not so sure. But are you sure that William Brown bought the flowers at that shop? Pretty sure, but anyway, I want those women there. Right. Here, sir. get down to the bar. Take Yaya to Inspector Megre at the flower shop on the corner. I'll collect the Martine women and see you there. Very good. Thank you, madame, and thank you very much. Good evening, monsieur. You want some flowers? Some help, madame. Has this man ever bought flowers here? I remember. He was so nice. Hmm. When did he buy them? I think it was last Saturday. Last Saturday afternoon. He bought a lot of flowers and one like this for his buttonhole. It looked so strange. Some clothes do not suit a buttonhole. And some do. Thank you. You like it? Mm -hmm. You shall have it. Was anyone with him? No. Did you see anyone waiting for him? No. I imagine she was waiting in the hotel. The Beau Séjour? Yes. You see, he was so nice. I went to the door to watch him go. You can see the hotel from here. He crossed the road and I saw him go in. Was anyone else uh, watching him? Oh, yes. There were quite a few people about. Women? Yes. Now, can you describe any of them? Well, I do not seem to notice women so much. What about this girl? No. I do not remember seeing her in the street at the time we're talking about. Now, I've asked for some other women to be brought here. I'd like you to tell me if you can recognize any of them. Well, it is very late, but uh, I will keep open for you. You're very patient, madame. Here. When I did this for him, he looked as if he wanted to kiss me. Mm. That is happiness. <laughs> you know you look a little like him. Hmm. Ah, uh, do you know this man? Giovanni Ambrosini? He's not the type I remember if I notice him about. No, I'm sorry. Right. There, here. I'll take a good look. What a pleasure. Good evening, ladies. Oh, Inspector, what a charming one. Inspector Megre. Uh, forgive me for bringing you all this way to ask you one question. When William came home on Saturday, was he wearing a buttonhole? William never wore a buttonhole in his life. He wasn't the type. Thank you, lady. Do you care to choose yourself some flowers? Oh, Inspector, you're too kind. Oh, oh. But it is very oh, difficult. I do not know. Take a closer look. I will. Did you get anything out of Giovanni? Not yet. No. She doesn't know him yet. You better get back to headquarters and work on him. And Sylvie? Yeah. You Sylvie and me. You get rid of the martinis and I'll join you at headquarters. Where's Yaya? She's not there. Drinking away across can. Come on. Oh, Inspector, I do hope we haven't been too extravagant. <laughs> How much, madam? I will soon tell you. Nothing to add? No. Have this typed up, get him to sign it and take him away. Come on. Ah. Any luck? Yes. He admits to meeting Harry Brown and stealing the will when William was drunk. Hmm. I only know about it. They were at Yaya celebrating William's birthday a month ago. William started talking about the will. He pulled it out and waved it around. Hmm. When did Giovanni steal it? Last Friday. He says he wanted a copy just for information, then to just slip it back. <laughs> William was killed the next day, very conveniently. Did Yaya know he'd stolen it? No, neither did Sylvia, according to him. Can't make Sylvie out. Did you get anything out of it? Well, did she admit meeting William at the hotel, all that flower business? She admits nothing. She just sits there like a stone. You know, my guess is that Harry Brown, hearing of the will, suggested killing William. He obviously hated his father. And then Sylvie acted as a decoy to 
get him to the spot. And then Giovanni did the deed and Harry was told to take the money to the hotel. I can't see Harry Brown facing blackmail for the rest of his life. Oh, then Sylvia and Giovanni must have had stuff between them. Killed William, the whole of the will, and then approached Harry Brown. Mm, well, it looks like it, but William was one of the family. Suppose Giovanni was jealous. So we went off with William. Giovanni follows. He kills him in a, in a fit of jealous rage, and then threatens to involve Sylvia unless she keeps her mouth shut. Oh, I don't think Giovanni was passionately in love with Sylvia. She was more in love with him. <laughs> What's the answer? Yaya is the only one who can make Sylvie talk. Shall we fix the old girl? No. I'll go over there, see if she's gone back. Tell them to uh, release Sylvie, bring her back home. Give me time to get there for her. Right. Yaya feet bad, walking bad. Yes, Yaya has walked a lot today. What about last Saturday? Where were you last Saturday, between two and five? Uh, here, alone, everybody go. Alone? Yaya wasn't here on Saturday? I'm doing. I, I, I must have a glass. Two glasses. You'd better lie down for a minute. Oh. Is this where William slept? On the divan. There was nowhere else. And Sylvie? If she was here, she came in with me. Yeah, yeah. Are you sure that William wasn't in love with Sylvie? Oh, he was fond of Sylvie. He was fond of me. I don't want to talk about it. Oh, what? I must have a drink. I really must. Not yet. Oh, my poor Sylvie. Well, what is the name of that prison they've taken her to? They say you can't talk. You can't even cry. But you're not going there, are you? It's Sylvie who... Sylvie, no, not Sylvie. William and I kept a bottle. I... What else did you keep in there? Nothing. They're Williams. I kept them. You loved William, didn't you? We got on. We were the same kind. Didn't you? He loved me. <laughs> Where did you get this? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Help me. Oh, she's ill. Oh. Get her, doctor. Yes. Right away. Where did you get that? I thought it would. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, no. It's all your fault. You stole him from me. Oh, Sylvia. It's not Good. true. It's not what she thinks. <laughs> I never suspected a thing. Make it up to my face and then behind my back. It only happened once because he kept on asking me. I saw the look you gave him when you went out of the room. Even then, I couldn't leave. So you followed him? He bought her flowers. I didn't want them. I didn't want him. Giovanni was good enough for her, but she had to have William, too. Not true. I must make her understand. When I did give in, I didn't want Giovanni to know. I was afraid he'd take advantage of it. I bought a knife. I knew he was going home. Where did you wait for him? Outside the town. He opened the car door, and I said, There's flowers for you. And he said, Sorry, yeah, yeah. And he took the knife out handed it to me and said, throw it away. Then he got me the only flower he had left from his buttonhole. Got in the car, drove away. 
all over the road. Uh. We'll have to go to hospital. Oh, no, she'll uh. live to die in prison. Get her some water. Is she? Did she forgive me? With her last breath. She didn't. Did. Yaya? Oh, Yaya! Are you lunching here or on the train? On the train. Harry Brown's offering to buy the ladies out of the lawsuit. 50,000 francs. Fair, even handsome. Mm. To each of the four. Mm. He doesn't know yet there's only three. What shall we tell him? You can tell him a fat old woman killed his father for love. Won't worry him. He thinks love and jealousy are exclusively French. <laughs>